Well, today I'm continuing my series on weak interactions with 25 reasons neutrinos don't exist. Now, you may know the story that in the 30s, Wolfgang and Pauli came up with the idea in order to conserve energy in weak interactions that there must be little neutral things that carry away energy. Well, he skipped a lot, and so I'll go through the list. There's a lot more going on, and not even that, exactly. So number one, neutrinos are not observed directly. We've never seen one, we don't see them directly. And that doesn't mean that there aren't things that can't be observed that aren't real, but if it can't be observed, it's likely not real. And in this case, for neutrinos, it's not real. Two, neutrinos don't initiate beta decay. And three, quantum fluctuations initiate beta decay. And that was the problem with Pauli's assumption. Pauli said, oh, the energy of the beta, the electron, varies over a range instead of being at the fixed maximum. So they have to account for the range of energy. Why is there a range and what happened to the rest of it? So they said, well, a neutrino carries away the rest of it. But the problem is, is something has to happen at the front end of the interaction for the interaction to happen. And it turns out that's a quantum fluctuation interaction. And the quantum fluctuation has energy. And during the, that interaction, it gives up its energy. So the energy comes at the beginning instead, at the end. And number four, neutrinos don't cause quantum tunneling. There's a potential barrier equal to the mass difference between the proton and neutron minus the electron of 782 keV. So the electron needs that energy to get into the proton to form a neutron. And neutrinos can't do that. Five, quantum fluctuations cause quantum tunneling to tunnel through the proton potential barrier. And it's more than a potential barrier. If you watch my videos on proton structure, you know from scattering experiments, we know protons have a radius. And the radius is at its charge radius. And this is a real physical thing that we believe is made up of thousands and thousands of tiny little particles, which we believe to be quantum fluctuations. So there's a shell of quantum fluctuations, and electron has to jump into that. And so that's what we mean by quantum tunneling, and that requires a quantum fluctuation. Six, W bosons don't cause quantum fluctuations. The problem with W bosons, theoretically, is that they don't have a long enough life for them to go from inside a proton to outside a proton. They have such a short lifetime that they decay inside the proton and never leave. So even if a W boson did exist and did decay to an electron, the electron would still be inside the proton and you still have a neutron. So a neutron would never decay to a proton using the W boson model because it's too massive, short-lived, and has too short of a range under the speed of light limit. So seven, neutrinos don't provide energy to form neutrons. So that energy has to come from somewhere. It comes from the quantum fluctuation. It comes at the beginning. 10, the quantum fluctuations cause the decay energy distribution. So if you've ever looked at that curve, I'll put one up, you get a smooth curve distribution that looks like black body radiation. The reason it looks like black body radiation is it's due to the statistical interaction probabilities between quantum fluctuations and the particle. That's why most things have that same sort of curve when they're due to quantum fluctuation interactions. So what we consider to be randomized probabilities 
are randomized probabilities of quantum fluctuation in their actions. And that's why there's the energy distribution. Quantum fluctuation provides some energy to it. The energy that's left is carried away from the beta. So 11, neutrinos are not needed for energy conservation. There's nothing left for the neutrino. Neutrinos under this scheme don't have energy. 12, the quantum fluctuations conserve the energy. Whether it's at the beginning of the interaction or the end of the interaction, quantum fluctuations conserve the energy, not a neutrino. And 13, spin is a quantum field effect. This is something I discussed in previous videos as well, that whenever you have a polarizer, you can set up a particle like a proton or electron, that whenever the quantum field is polarized, the dipoles have to rotate. And because of the energies required, the dipoles tend to rotate the same direction. And that's where spin and angular momentum come from. It's a quantum field effect. And so they're quantum field interactions, not something intrinsic to the particle itself. The particle just has to act like a polarizer and the spin just happens because it's a quantum field effect. And so you don't have particles that add up spin because that was a secondary reason to invent a neutrino was to conserve spin and follow these spin conservation rules because people didn't understand how spin was and angular momentum were conserved in particle interactions. They had no idea that it's a quantum field effect and the quantum field does the conservation. So 15, neutrinos are not needed to conserve spin, as I said. I have nothing to do with it. 16, point particles can't spin nor have angular momentum. In most theories, neutrinos are essentially point particles. Well, a point particle has no dimension. Something that's dimensionless can't spin and it can't have angular momentum. In order to have angular momentum, you have to have a radius. It has to be non-zero. So you can't have a hypothetical point particle with spin. That's, that's nonsense. 17, a rotating dipole is needed to conserve spin and angular momentum. You have to have something with a radius. And in some interactions, you have a serious amount of angular momentum that must be conserved when the interaction is over. And you can't even do that with a single electron or proton because electrons and protons have a fixed amount of spin. You need something that can have a variable amount of spin in order for spin conservation to really work and angular momentum conservation to really work. And this requires a rotating dipole. So 18, angular momentum is conserved by a series of rotating quantum fluctuation dipoles. And 19, a series of dipoles conserves linear momentum too. And the way this happens is something like what we see with a photon. You get a series of quantum fluctuations and in a photon, each opposite one rotates in the opposite direction, first one way and then the other way. That way they don't have angular momentum. But if you have a photon-like thing in the quantum field that's conserving angular, angular momentum, they rotate the same direction. However, the polarity reverses so that you don't have a magnetic field. Otherwise, you'd have magnetic field. So you have First electron positrons are oriented one way and then oriented the other way, but the angular momentum keeps happening in the same direction. And as it progresses, you have linear momentum. So this gives us a neutrino-like and photon-like thing that propagates through the quantum field as conservation of momentum and energy and linear momentum. Then 20, 
Neutrino theory leads to universal neutrino death. And this is a problem with cosmology and universe theory because the neutrino theory is a one-way theory where the energy goes into neutrinos and neutrinos go out into space and the energy never gets heard from again and all these interactions are producing all these neutrinos and the neutrinos are seldom interacting and the energy is seldom being recaptured. So under this scenario, the universe would die by everything becoming neutrinos and there'd be no, nothing left but a sea of neutrinos. And that's not the way it happens. The energy goes into the quantum field, the energy comes out of the quantum field. It's a constant balance. All the energy arises from the quantum field. And it's this balance that means that the universe continues on infinitely. You don't have a cold neutrino death scenario like the neutrino theory requires. 21, the quantum field recycles the energy. And 22, neutrino detections are really quantum fluctuation interactions. When we do neutrino detection experiments and we look for something with a certain amount of angular momentum and energy, what we're detecting is this type of event where the quantum fluctuations are conserving energy and momentum in a particular direction. So you have these quantum fluctuation interactions which propagate through space. Well, occasionally something will pick up on that and absorb it, just like occasionally a photon gets absorbed. Although it's more unusual for these to get picked off uh, because you have to have something that's in the proper state to absorb that amount of angular momentum. Well, 23, neutrino theory requires a different neutrino for every particle in interaction. And we see this in the theory when we start with by looking at, first they said they need a muon neutrino, then they needed a tau neutrino. And they said, well, muons and taus have to be leptons. But if you actually look at a physical model of the muon and tau under the Ionian theory, that as first developed by Stardust and Feynman and others, the muon and tau aren't leptons, they're mesons. And so a neutrino would have to have different amount of energy momentum and angular momentum and particular angular momentum gets difficult because you have to have a different neutrino for a different amount of angular momentum for every possible particle interaction there is. And that doesn't make any sense. You can't have a different neutrino for every interaction. What's really conserving that energy, 14, instead the quantum fluctuation conserves all properties. In order for energy conservation to work and angular momentum and linear momentum and spin, all these things are quantum fluctuation interactions. So we have to have quantum fluctuations in the mix in order to explain conservation of all the properties due to particle interactions. We need the quantum fluctuations. So why not just use quantum fluctuations for everything? They already do everything else. 25. Neutrinos are an unnecessary complication. They really don't do anything in the end. If you really do your analysis of the physics, there's nothing left for neutrinos to do because quantum fluctuations have done everything. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you do, please like it, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe to see my future videos. And if you'd like to learn more, I talk about this in each of my three books, uh, but a lot more particle theory in my book, Goodbye Quarks, the Ionian Theory. And since I'm a retired independent researcher, buying one of my books helps support me in my 
old age and my retirement and allows me to continue to make videos like this and do more research and write papers. So I'd appreciate it if you buy a book and I also have a Patreon account link below. So thanks for watching.